Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this light bite on creative lighting design. In this part we will talk about contrasts. My name is Bayulet Torres and in this presentation we will get some relevant information on how to understand contrast, its role and integration in our lighting concepts. To address this topic, I will start by reading a quote from A Primer of Visual Literacy, where Donis writes, All meaning exists in the context of polarities. Could there be understanding of hot without cold, high without low, sweet without sour? I would also add, of course, light without darkness. With this thought, we can start discovering more about contrast. At the end of this presentation, I hope we can have more elements to integrate with a better understanding contrast as part of our language when designing. Let's, um, let's then start with this presentation. Contrast is a powerful design tool. Scales of contrast are the essential force in the articulation of design and communication. In this example, coming from the Jewish Museum in Berlin, the white contrastful glow on the ceiling is creating a strong message that goes along with the story to be told in this space. It is also said that contrast is a powerful means of expression in the structuring of compositional unity and in the intensification of meaning. This example taken from Ion which is a shopping mall in Singapore, is a good reference on how the dynamic facade can serve as canvas to evoke uh, emotions and, of course, welcome visitors who are about to start a shopping experience. See uh, also the same shopping mall here in this picture, where the facade is being reinvented by adding more colorful aspects. But the contrast is also an important keyword. Our ability to sense subtle and particular sudden differences in our immediate environment functions as a crucial aspect of our biological survival kit. Examples of, of, of this can be, for instance, um, changes in temperature, changes in movement, smell, sound, and taste. Contrast is central to our visual perception. It's the basic op operation of our eye. Detecting change in the field of vision and translating the spatial setting into a complex network where each shape finds its existence through its degree of contrast with its neighbors. The resulting pattern, although illusory, is translated by the brain into a, into a three-dimensional space. The incidence of this visual pattern responds to the direction of light, each shape in the network being differentiated by size, value, color, and textural attributes that communicate precise qualities, such as rough, smooth, glossy, matte, and specular, for instance. Without contrast, a scene would appear as an extremely dull event with little or nothing to be seen. This example here shows exactly the opposite. For example, um, when we look at a scene or a pictorial display, our eyes are immediately attracted to the areas of greater contrast, such as a flash of color in a monochromatic field of value and vice versa, as clearly seen in the images of these two paintings. Therefore, when we design, we achieve the same vital force to a structure and create two and three dimensional, dimensional events, as that used by our perception to make sense of our surroundings. And as wisely mentioned in the book Made of Light, through the relationship between light and dark, we are able to determine the form of architecture by the manner in which space and surface is revealed. In this slide, we see a very nice example 
that demonstrates the integration of contrast as part of the architecture and also the lighting design. Here, the architect Luis Kahn achieved a marvelous play of intensities, same as we will observe in the following examples. In the left image, artificial light that creates an interesting lighting pattern along the corridor, even giving an indication of flow. When we go uh, to the right side, we can see a pattern created naturally, using it as a gesture to extend the vertical elements to the floor. In both examples, it's clear the use of contrast as an element to communicate and merging together with architecture. The incidence of natural light in this example and the high contrast created in the space becomes a statement that attracts visitors to this spot specifically, but also works as an extension of the architectonic language in a min minimalistic space. In this building, the contrast generated by cool and warm light dictates a clear rhythm of architectonic elements and different planes. In this uh, bridge image, nodes of color, of color glow are the cue of contrast that makes the structure stand out in the horizon. In this slide, Reflections and shadows as another ingredient to create contrast, and in the case of the right picture, even as a means of emphasizing architecture and transit direction for this very long corridor. We continue now having a quick look to another aspect to take into account when trying to use contrast as a communication tool, and this is clear. Let's start by reading once more a quote found in the book Made of Light. The strong contrast between a light source and its background can often create glare. Sometimes this can impair vision or cause actual physical pain. In architecture, however, it can be dynamically employed as a means of expression. As observed uh, in these uh, two examples from the Jewish uh, Museum in Berlin, where glare is used to evoke an extremely mystical atmosphere. Using these inspirational examples, it's worthy to mention as well that when using daylight, the natural movement of the sun can create a dynamic effect along the day together with the shadows, ending up, of course, in an interesting design element. On the other hand, in cloudy days, same effect could be also be simulated by artificial light. Now, uh, going back to our topic contrast, here another important fact. In visual perception of the real world, contrast is determined by difference in the color and brightness of the object and other objects within the same field of view. The human visual system is more sensitive to contrast than absolute luminance. In this slide, and by showing these images, we can observe in a much more clear way the role that color and brightness can play when talking about visual perception. We will discuss now in the coming slides some other useful aspects to create or integrate contrast in our designs, um, maybe a bit more technical, but still very relevant for you to know. Let's uh, continue by discussing contrast made by accent factor. And I would say, observe first the set of images here, where by locally increasing or decreasing the strength of light, it is possible to create different brightness and shadow patterns. The harsher the shadows, the more dramatic and aggressive the effect obtained. The aim is, um, of course, to give a maximum expression to form, a structure, texture, and color in comparison with the surroundings. Accent factor is therefore the visual effect achieved when an object is highlighted to reveal three-dimensional shape, and it is defined by two elements, the luminance between the object and its surrounding background, as we know now, called contrast. When planning accent lighting, it is important to define the required effect or accent factor, which may vary from noticeable to very dramatic, 
as demonstrated in this slide. You can see that uh, from left to right, the different visual impact according to the luminance relation between surroundings and object. To obtain satisfactory effects in situations where the level of general lighting is high or there is incidence of daylight, powerful accent lighting should be used. The effects shown on this slide are given for white spot lighting in an environment with white light as well. Um, by using color spots, we could have added a visible color difference or contrast by using less light. But um, while well, these observations will be explained in the coming two pages. The definition of the beam is of great influence on the contrast to be realized, this together with the light intensity. A hard spot with little or no spill light lends itself to the creation of theatrical or even dramatic effect. Opposite to that theatrical effect, more spill light will end up in a softer effect reducing the contrast as well as serving as illumination to the general area or the area around the spot. You can observe it in this slide with impressions of um, different spots. We will now move to the human perception of color light, which is uh, another aspect that can play an important, an important role when creating a lighting design based in, in contrast. Uh, well, let's go now to what is almost the last part uh, of this presentation. As just mentioned, here another important fact for contrast. The human eye is much more sensitive to color light than white light. The first image with the color wheel shows the different relative luminance for all colors versus the same luminance sensation as white light. Therefore, uh, we can say as a rule of thumb, right image is illustrating the percentages of color light needed, needed for the same perception of brightness compared to white light. With this last explanation, we are now approaching the end of this uh, presentation. We will close by reading a very inspiring quote related to, to our topic, and it says, Contrast is not only the fundamental tool for revealing form, but also that through this union, we can evoke, move, provide expression, and imply meaning. As you can see in these two images. And uh, well, I hope after this presentation, you feel inspired enough to use contrast as another language to be integrated in your lighting designs. Thanks a lot for your attention.